Hey, this is Tom, and this is Tom's Ready Room Show, and I'm down in my workshop, and I've been working for about three hours trying to get something that used to work, and I could not get it to work. I finally figured it out after three hours that I was wrong. Now, question is, what have I got here? Okay, on the laptop, and let me use a little camera here to move it around. So I'm going to push this button, push that button, and we can zoom in, zoom in, and we reposition it. Whoops. Okay, you probably still can't see it very well, but what I have running on the laptop is a program that displays where aircraft are real time. This is almost real time. Because I've got set up right now, I've got, let me see, I've got one of these, let me get it in the frame here. Where are we? Okay, I've got one of these, and I need more light. I forgot to turn all the lights on, the reason being is it really gets hot in there when I do that. Okay, now, let me look at the camera. And see, where are we? Okay, here we are. Here is one of those USB TV dongles. I have three or four of these. And I have one connected to this computer. And it's running this software that will monitor the transponders that are on aircraft. And they're more and more of them going on aircraft are more and more aircraft are getting these transponders and the transponders send out location of the aircraft the airspeed of the aircraft um what else the heading of the aircraft and all this stuff and then this software decodes that stuff and here's a listing of the data it's decoding and then it also plots it on a map. Probably can't see this too well, but this is a map of Florida, which I can zoom in or zoom out. And the aircraft that it's picking up are being plotted on this map. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little better. For a second, I won't zoom in too long, because it... So, I think you might be able to actually see the little aircraft symbols. And over, where's my pointer? Um, over, over here is the west coast of Florida. And this is the Tampa Bay area. And I'm fortunate enough that I live just west of the Tampa International Airport, which is a big airport. International Airport means that it gets flights from overseas. It comes in this airport. So it's very busy. And, of course, there are probably over this area that I'm in right now, there's probably, I don't know, 50, 100 aircraft. And I'm picking up, I'm up to 27 aircraft. Now, one of the disadvantages I have, and let me zoom back out a little bit, is what I'm using. Let me flip, whoa, let me flip my viewfinder over so I can see what you're seeing, maybe. Is what I'm using is this is the little antenna that comes with these TV dongles, and it's made for listening to TV, but TV outside the United States. And uh, these are the $20 dongles that I've talked about before. This is the antenna for it. And typically, you don't use this antenna. If you want to listen to uh, UHF or VHF, you don't use this antenna. It's not a very good antenna because it's specifically cut 
for a certain frequency. Now, turns out that that frequency is about double, I mean half, excuse me, half the frequency that these transponders are working on. These transponders are transmitting on 1.090 gigahertz. So what I really need is I need an antenna that's only about half the height. And what I plan to do, or planned to do, and I haven't done it yet, is to cut this down to that height. You can also buy um, off of Amazon or eBay antennas that are specifically cut for that frequency, that 1.090 gigahertz frequency. So you will get a better reception. What I'm doing right now, and maybe I probably can't show you, but I'll try to show you, is where my antenna is right this minute. It's in the workshop with me, and it's right above the laptop, and it's right, and it won't show, but I'll kind of point to where it's at. It's, yeah, let me, oh my gosh, I don't want to get in a picture, scare everybody. It's up here, up on the uh, guide rail, whatever you want to call it, for the garage door. And so it's just sitting on there. It's a narrow piece of uh, metal. So it doesn't have a good ground plane. It doesn't, although at that frequency, it doesn't need a big ground plane. But it's only 10 feet above the ground, which typically you want it much higher. As a matter of fact, you can get um, an authorization to become a um, monitor of these transmissions and then there's a website I think one of them is called flight flight radar 24 something like that so you can go on the internet and see the same thing I'm seeing here but you can see it internationally and I try to get in that service because you can apply and if you meet the requirements you can get in that service but and you have to send in pictures of your surroundings, you know, trees or power lines and stuff like that. Well, I got a lot of trees. And so what they sent me back was, sorry, but these transmissions and the receivers are line of sight, which means if you've got trees in a way that's going to block the signal, you're not going to get very good performance. Well, I am getting decent performance. As a matter of fact, if I look on the screen, let's go back down to the screen. Of course, I need a cameraman to do all this camera work for me. Okay, see if I can zoom in. I don't know if this is showing up on my... Whoops, there we go. That's a pretty good zoom. Maybe too much. Let me back off just to here. Whoops, wrong way. But where it's plotting these aircraft, I am tracking aircraft about the first one right now is about 70 nautical miles from my location so if I had this antenna up in the air above the trees then I could probably do a lot better maybe get 200 miles because the advantage of it being on an aircraft the aircraft is way up in the air so that helps my antenna see the signal. And of course, when the, when the um, aircraft get lower and get close to the airport, that's when I lose the signal because it falls below the tree level here and I don't do as good. Now, I notice I've got three, three aircraft that are north of me, almost due north. Well, turns out that's where the open sky is, is due north. So, I'm running this software that tracks these aircraft, and I'm on my other computer, I'm running, let me back up for a second, 
for the camera. On this computer, I cheated a little bit in that instead of taking the time to program the frequencies for the Tampa airport into my scanner, I just said I'll use, there's a scanner on the internet on radio reference that is monitoring that traffic. So I said, I, I just use them right now. And if I, I turn, it, turn it back on. So, consequently, I can hear the traffic controller talking to these same aircraft that are flying overhead that I see where they're at, and I know what's going on. Maybe not too exciting. The exciting part was the three hours I spent getting it working again. I haven't used this setup in probably six or eight months, and it took me three or four hours to get it set up again. The whole problem was is that this software that's running over over here and the TV dongle needs special drivers, software drivers. And what happens quite often is when Windows does an update to Windows, it updates the drivers too, and it's the wrong drivers, and now the thing stops working. I tried three different dongles this morning trying to figure out what was wrong. I used both computers to try to figure out what was wrong. Turns out that was the problem. So I got everything working once again. So um, right now, Mainly commercial aircraft have these transponders. Um, they are, like I say, they're more and more required on all aircraft, so you're going to see more and more aircraft get them. So I thought I'd show you my setup since it took me three hours to get it working. I wanted to show it off. And again, I'm using one of these dongles and uh, TV dongles cost $20, which will receive, the $20 ones will receive from 30 megahertz to about one gigahertz. And like I say, turns out this is just above one gigahertz. So it receives that. And it's a, probably another reason it's not getting as distant um, aircraft is because the dongle is is only good up to about one gigahertz and this is just over so it's probably good enough but i'm tracking um 30 aircraft now i'm up to 30 aircraft it's just in my vicinity so anyway that's the show for today that's another thing that you could be doing or playing with when the shortwave bands are basically dead is listening to the aircraft bands and this is this particular scanner that's on the internet is only listening to one frequency at the Tampa International Airport that's all it's listening to there are many other frequencies in my area because I have that airport which is a major airport I have a small airport in St. Pete for for just little uh, aircraft private aircraft mainly and then there's another airport just about two miles from me. It's a really tiny aircraft, and it doesn't have um, actually an air traffic controller at that airport. It's too small. So I've got a lot of airports that I can listen to and um, aircraft themselves up in that range, which is the aircraft... And, communications itself, not the transponder, but it's down in, uh, gee, I forgot, but it's it's down in below 300 megahertz. And there's both, both, both you can listen to, you can both listen to commercial and military, the voice communications. So anyway, that's the show. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Bye-bye.